Hi, everybody. Um, this is the chapter 13 group quiz. Uh, so for number one, I asked you to find x. So it's the length of a right triangle. I have an angle, so I know I'm going to use one of my trig functions. So I like to list out the information I have. So I have my angle, which is 22 degrees. And then from that, that angle, I can see that I have the opposite, which is x. And I can see that I have the hypotenuse, which I know because it's across from the right angle, which is 12.4. Now I ask myself, well, which trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? And that's sine, because sine of x equals opposite over hypotenuse. Now you plug in what you have, so sine of 22 degrees equals x over 12.4. And then to solve this, I'm going to multiply both sides by 12.4. And what I have left is x equals 12.4 sine of 22. And you actually plug this in to your calculator exactly as you see it. 12.4 sine of 22. And you get about 4.2. Six, five. And that's the length of your leg. For number two, it asks, what is the exact value of sine 60? So I know that to find those exact values, I use my special right triangles. So this would be a 30, 60, 90. And the way you mark all of those up is across from your 30, you put x. Your hypotenuse is always 2x. And your last leg is always x root 3. So I know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So here's opposite, and here's my hypotenuse. So sine of 60 is x root 3 over 2x. My x's cancel out, and I'm just left with root 3 over 2. Number three asks us to find the inverse. So we know that when we're finding the inverse, all you have to do is switch your x and y values. Now, we always like our equations to say y equals, so we have to solve for y now. So I'm going to do this by squaring both sides. So I get x squared equals y minus 3. And now I can add 3 to both sides. And this is my inverse. And then the way you write an inverse is like this. If you left it as y equals, though, you did not lose any points. OK, find the exact, val exact value of cosine 45. So I know that I'm going to need to use my 45, 45, 90 right triangle for this. And I always mark that up as x, x, x root 2. Um, so I can pick either angle, so let's go from this angle. I know cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so cosine of 45 is x over x root 2. So my x's cancel out, so I'm left with 1 over root 2, and then I ha just have to rationalize my denominator very quickly, and I get root 2 over 2. For number five, I asked you to find the xy coordinate where the function and its inverse intersect. Um, so this was just like the task we did. So the first thing we're going to need to do is find the inverse. So I'm going to switch x and y. And then solve for y. So I'm going to start by subtracting five from both sides. And it equals negative one-third y. Now remember, when you're dealing with a fraction, the top number is multiplying. The bottom number, the denominator, is dividing. So really what I'm doing is dividing by negative 3. I can do the opposite of that and get rid of it by multiplying by negative 3. The only thing to remember here is that you are going to need to distribute. Okay, so here's my inverse. 
This is my inverse function. So if I want to find where the two lines intersect, well, I know that intersecting lines are equal at the point of intersection. So I'm just going to set my original function and set it equal to my inverse. So I'm going to say 5 minus 1 third x equals negative 3x plus 5. Now we have to solve for x. Now this is the point where it, it's really helpful if you remember how to um, clear your fractions. And you can clear your fractions by multiplying every single term by your LCD, which is 3. Just make sure you do distribute it out to every single term. But watch what happens. Your fractions disappear. Okay? Now all I need to do is finish solving for x. So I'm going to add 9x to both sides. I see that I accidentally wrote 5 when I should have written 15. A little typo there. So that means that this is 45. And now I can subtract 15 from both sides. And then I can divide by 8. So I get x equals 30 over 8, which is 15 over 4, if you simplify it. So I have my x value, but I also need to find my y value. So I can do that by substituting it into either equation, and I'm going to pick my inverse equation um, because I think it's a little easier to work with. So I'm going to substitute 15 fourths into this equation. So if y equals negative 45 fourths, plus I can turn this into fourths by multiplying it by 4 over 4. So that becomes 60 fourths. So I get y equals 15 fourths as well. So my intersecting point is 15 fourths, 15 fourths. Okay, this one asks to find the two missing sides. And since I know, I see that it's a 30 degree angle here, I know that this must be a 60 degree angle, and now I have a special right triangle. So you could still use your trig functions here, um, but if you have a special right triangle, I think it's easier to just mark it up and solve in that way. So I can see here that 10 is equal to 2x. That means that x equals 5. So this is the value that I'm going to use to help me find my missing sides, which means that this leg is equal to 5, and this bottom leg is equal to 5 root 3. So it's much easier if you, it's easier and quicker, I think, if you have your special right triangle things memorized. Okay, and this last one says find x. So I know it's a right triangle. I know I have an angle involved. I'm going to use my trig functions. So I list what I have, and I know that my angle is x degrees. And then from my angle, I see that this is opposite. So I have opposite, which is 12.3. And I know that this is adjacent. Okay, then I ask myself, which trig function uses opposite and adjacent? That's tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I have tangent of x degrees equals 12.3 over 10.7. And remember, when you're trying to find the angle, what you do is you say the inverse tangent, and then you type in 12.3 over 10.7, and this will tell you what your angle is. So you say inverse tangent 12.3 divided by 10.7, close your parentheses, and you get about 48.98 degrees. Make sure you have the degrees sign um, because it is an angle. And that is all for the group quiz.